guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my recipe for fried squash or fried zucchini as we know it in America. Now, there are two ways that you can make this. You can either make it with zucchini that you'd find in your regular American grocery stores or you can use that green long squash or the big fat squash that you'd find at any Indo-Caribbean market or Asian market. So, whichever way you decide to make it, I promise the end product is going to be amazing. Now, fried squash in our family goes the best with cassava roti. Lucky for you guys, I posted my cassava roti recipe a little while ago, so make sure you head on over to that video so you can have a nice little something to go ahead and scoop up your squash with. I'll have that video linked right up here, so click on that when you're done watching this, and also it'll be in the description box down below where you can access the link. So, I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. In today's video, I used some dried fish from Guyana. You can go ahead and supplement that with shrimp. Shrimp is really good. Or you could also use regular salt fish that is more available to everybody here in the US. So, whatever you way you decide to make it, you can even make it vegetarian. It's going to be amazing. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into making this recipe. The ingredients that you're going to need for your squash today are very simple. I have the star of the show, I have my squash here. Now I'm using zucchini but if you wanted to you could go ahead and use that long green squash that's usually sold in Asian supermarkets. I didn't have that on hand so I'm using the zucchini today. All you want to do is chop it up into small pieces as you guys can see here. You want to dice it and then you want to wash it and set it aside so you can use it. I also have some Guyana dried fish. I have this on hand today but if you don't have this you can replace it with some salt fish. You could also replace it with shrimp and some people even use chicken in this dish. Some people actually use beef too but you can feel free to replace the meat and the protein however which way you want. You can even make it plain without any meats. I also have some diced onion, I have a sliced tomato, I have a little bit of tomato paste, some hot peppers and these are the weary weary peppers. You can use as much or as little as you'd like. I have some chopped garlic and you want something that's going to give it a nice little herbaceousness so either some scallions, some parsley or some cilantro or culantro. Today I have a little bit of cilantro. You can also go in with some of that homemade green seasoning. I have the recipe up on my channel. I'll link it up right here but I didn't have any on hand today so that's why I'm using the cilantro. I also have a little bit of grangira. Now this is optional. This is my little touch on it. I really like the flavor that it adds. I also have a little bit of black pepper, some salt to taste as well as some oil to help me fry up all of my ingredients. I've gone ahead and I've heated up a few tablespoons of oil in my pot and at this point I'm going to go in with all of my dried fish. Now you do not want this on a very very high heat because if you have it on a very high heat that fish is going to stick to the bottom of the pot and you're going to have a big mess. So I have it like on a medium low heat right now. I'm going to allow this dry fish to fry up for about 5 minutes or 6 minutes or just until it gets a little crispy on the outside and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. Once your dry fish has had a chance to fry up a little bit and get a little crispier on the edges, it is time to go in with all of your chopped onions. And when you go in with all of your chopped onions, you're going to go in the same time with all of your hot pepper as well as all of your garlic. And you're going to stir this around and allow this to cook for about 4 minutes just until the onions get a little golden brown around the edges. Once your onions have had a chance to get a little golden brown around the edges, it's time to go in with your sliced tomatoes as well as your tomato paste. And I like to add in both the tomatoes as well as the tomato paste because the tomato paste gives the whole dish a nice really rich flavor and it colors the dish really nicely and the fresh tomatoes obviously give it that fresh tomato taste. At this point I'm also going to go in with all of my chopped cilantro. Now I'm going to add it in here so I can get that flavor out of it and I'm also going to add in a little bit at the end. So we're going to stir this around and we are going to cook it until those tomatoes begin to break down. And just to help those tomatoes along a little bit to help them break down we're going to add in a little bit of salt. Now you don't want to go too heavy with the salt in the beginning because that dry fish may be a little salty still. So you want to monitor your salt in the beginning and then at the end you can always taste and add more. It's been about 5 minutes and my tomatoes have cooked down beautifully. And as you guys can see everything has started to stick just a little bit at the bottom. That's just showing you that a lot of the moisture is cooked out from these seasonings and these veggies. So at this point I am going to go ahead and add in all of my zucchini or my squash. And once you add it in, you're going to go ahead and give it a stir and get it well incorporated into the rest of the ingredients and the seasonings. Once you add all of your squash into the pot, you're going to go in with your black pepper. And this is black pepper to taste, of course. 
and I also have a little bit of the ground jeera that I'm going to add in. And at this point, you just want to stir it up and get everything incorporated properly and all of those seasonings incorporated. I'm also going to go in with a little pinch of salt because remember, you want to build up your flavors as you're cooking every dish. And once you give this a stir, you're going to allow it to cook uncovered for about 5 to 10 minutes or just until some of that moisture from the zucchini has cooked out. And then I'll show you guys what to do next. This is what the squash looks like after about 6 minutes of cooking. As you guys can see, it's released a lot of water. Now, I didn't add any. The reason being is because the zucchini has a naturally high water content. And also, since I had it soaking in water, once I cut it, it absorbed a lot of water. So that's why it's released the water that it has. This is what my squash mixture looks like after about 20 minutes of cooking. As you guys can see, it's cooked down really well and all of that squash that we had in the beginning has melted down into this amount. So that's why I usually start with a lot. Now, I didn't add any water throughout the whole cooking process because mine released a lot of water. So I just allowed it to cook in the same juices throughout the whole process. And basically that's it. Once it's tender, it is done. So once your squash is done cooking, you're gonna go ahead and give it a final taste for salt and any other seasonings you'd like to add. Then you're gonna go ahead, serve it up, top it with some fresh scallions or some cilantro or parsley, whatever you have on hand, and it's ready to serve after that. So of course, I enjoyed mine with my cassava roti. As I said before, go ahead and check out that recipe for cassava roti if you wanna make that with your fry squash. So I hope you all enjoyed this video today. Go ahead and give it a nice big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed yet. And of course, keep leaving your comments down below so I'll know what to make you guys next. Bye guys.